Hey everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net and let me welcome you to this fourth tutorial in my particular basic training series here at CreativeCow.net. Now this particular tutorial was inspired by a post that I got on the trap code forum here at CreativeCow.net and I think I got this either late last night or early this morning and the question was how do you create accumulating snow particles on objects in After Effects using trap code particular and this uh, post comes from Alariza, I hope I didn't butcher that too badly, I apologize if I did and they want to know that you know if I've got a scene here that's a 2D image how do I get particular to accumulate snow on specific objects not just the whole scene so um, I think that is a great question and coincidentally I had a tutorial that I had kind of mocked up for my uh, particular basic my particular uh, DVD that I did here at creativecow.net practical particles that was very similar in concept but just didn't make it on the DVD for space and, and time so um, this is a great opportunity to kind of demonstrate that technique for you so let's hop over here into After Effects and if we scrub through the timeline you can see I've got the same picture as uh, or I just pulled the picture off of Creative Cow and what I've done is I've created some particles that are coming down here and if you'll see on the umbrella you're starting to get some build up and I've also kind of changed it around so there's some build up on the ground as well but um, you can definitely do this and we'll talk about some of these settings as we go through building this up. Now since this is not my image and I can't distribute it we won't be using this to build our tutorial around we'll create a whole new scene so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a new composition we'll call this final comp 720p 23.976 frames per second 10 seconds is probably plenty of time click OK we'll make this 50% so we can see. Now the next thing I want to do is basically just create a background here and I've found some notebook paper and we're going to scale this up and we'll rotate it around 90 degrees maybe scale it up even a little bit more pull it down so we got some of those lines at the top and let's just recolor this to make it blue the same way as the inspiration so we'll just go to color correction hue and saturation and we'll just shift the hue around here till we get kind of that blue look maybe pull the darkness or lightness down a little bit desaturate just a hair okay next thing we want to do is create kind of that um, I guess the horizon line so we'll grab a new shape layer and I've got uh, basically a turquoisey fill um, it's a radial, a radial fill and a little bit of a black stroke and we'll just create a new shape layer like this and we'll transform the rectangle just a bit and the, let's see, the gradient here and we'll increase the endpoint out so we kind of get a brighter highlight in the middle and more kind of darker on the edges and let's change the transfer mode of this so we can see what's underneath it and we'll change the whole layer from normal to multiply like that and maybe just bring down the opacity a little bit by hitting T and dragging it down nothing too you know major alright so there's our background next thing we want to do is to drop in our umbrella and I've found one like so and maybe I just want to flip it around like that and maybe just rotate it a little bit there we go so there's our umbrella alright now here's where things get kind of maybe a little trickier to understand um, but I think you'll you'll get it what we need to do is to create a new solid which we're going to use as our bounce layer to have the particles from Trapco Particular hit and stick to now ordinarily we you know put a camera in here lay a plane down flat and have the particles hit it but in this case we want to be able to have different areas of the screen accumulate snow and so what we want to do is to create a new solid layer 
and we're going to use this at a 45 degree angle so that we can accumulate snow over the entire scene. Now since we're going to be rotating it at 45 degrees, we need to make it much bigger than our composition. So we'll go maybe 2000 by 2000 and we'll call this uh, snow mat. Like that. The uh, color doesn't matter. Click OK. Now what we want to do is turn this into a 3D layer, hit W to reveal our rotation tool, and then basically hit shift and rotate this 45 degrees. So just like that. If you hit the R to reveal the rotation, you can see that we've rotated 45 degrees. Next thing I want to do is bring down the opacity so that we can see through it. Um, and then what we're going to do is basically trace out any areas of our composition where we want snow to hit and accumulate. So we'll grab the pen tool and we'll zoom in 100% here to this umbrella and we'll just quickly mask out the uh, umbrella here. doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can make it as perfect as you want for your individual needs. For us, you know, for a tutorial here, it doesn't have to be too precise here. All right, there we go. So here's the deal. You'd think that you'd be able to basically just introduce some particles here, have them hit, and everything would be, would, would be just fine, but that's not the case. We actually need to pre-compose this in order to have particulars see the masking on this. So um, let's go ahead and create our snow particles, and then we'll worry about you know transforming this into a layer in which a particular can interact with. So let's go layer, new solid. And we'll call this particular snow. And this time we do want to make it comp size and click OK. And to this we want to add effect trap code particular. Now by default we've got our little bunch of particles. We need to change this into kind of more of a, a snow uh, driven effect. So let's change the emitter from a point to a box and basically stretch it out pretty wide, a lot wider than our uh, composition width. So about 2,000, 2,100 is fine. And the other two we don't need to worry about. The Z, if you want it to uh, fall and get some depth of field and everything else, then you want to probably increase the Z size. But um, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. It does impact how much snow accumulates on our object here. So we'll leave it at a relatively small number right now. Maybe just punch it out to about 300 or so. And we want to shift all this up. So we'll drag everything in the Y up here above the screen like so. I'm going to turn the velocity down because I don't want the particles shooting out everywhere. I'm basically going to have gravity do all the work for us. So let's come down here to the physics settings and twirl up the gravity. Probably too much. We'll try 90. And basically just scrub through the timeline and figure out timing. Um, if you can do a pre-render, that's fine just to make sure that the snow's falling at somewhat of a realistic um, rate or something that you like visually. We also want to increase the particle life or else when they hit our umbrella they won't stick, they'll just basically stick and die real fast. So we want these to accumulate over time so we need the particles to stay on longer. And so just you know pull that up till it's longer than our comp. Our comp is 10 seconds and our life here is 17 so that should be just fine. All right, so we basically have our snow falling down. Now let's turn our attention back to creating this interactive layer. So grab the snow mat, and I'm going to drop it under this. Uh, actually, just leave it where it is. Increase the opacity right back. So what we want to do is pre-compose this layer by choosing Layer, Pre-Compose. We want to move all attributes into the new comp and open it. So we'll click OK, and if we toggle the transparency, you can see that we have the layer just the way that it should be. We'll actually grab the uh, umbrella here, pop it in the back. Well, not going to ma matter really <laughs> because we've changed it in this comp. So um, I guess what we could do is to demonstrate this. Just grab the notebook paper and the umbrella, hit layer, Pre-compose, we'll call this uh, BG for background, OK, and we'll grab the Let's 
up there like that. We'll grab the background and pop it in here so you can see it lines up just the way we want. Now what we need to do is to basically de-rotate the snow mat here. And the reason why we're doing that is we want this layer to be rotated in our final comp and if we don't have it rotated in our final comp the snow won't interact with it. So we basically have traced it out on an angle so in perspective at 45 degrees in the main comp rotate it 45 degrees but now what we want to do is derotate this back to zero so it'll basically elongate it in this composition but when we hop back into our final comp what we can do is take the snow mat comp make it a 3D composition and then we can rotate this back hitting shift and rotating at 45 degrees and when we rotate that back to 315 degrees you can see once again it lines up perfectly with our comp. Now you can see the layer here is smaller so you gotta be careful you might cut off some stuff um, if you don't make your layer size big enough but this will basically line everything back up the right way. So let's go to our particular snow here and see how this effect works. Come down here to our physics and change the model from air to bounce and then twirl down the bounce settings and for the wall layer let's change this from none to snow mat layer and then instead of infinite plane we'll go to layer alpha so that will only use the alpha um, that's solid in our comp or in our plane I guess our layer and everything else will pass right through and we want to change the collision event from bounce to stick so now if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that stuff falls down and sticks to our layer. Now, what I was talking about earlier with the side, the z-depth here is, um, if you want more snow to accumulate, you want the z-depth to be narrower, so more particles obviously interact with this umbrella. So if we decrease the emitter size z down here, like so, you can see that we're having more particles stick or hit that umbrella increase the particles per second here. You see we're getting a nice kind of build up. It's clipping off right here so you can just play with these settings until it um, hits the full umbrella and you can you know pull this back and forth in z-depth too until you get um, right where you want to be. So now if you scrub through the timeline you can see we get plenty of particles accumulating here on the umbrella. Now you can turn off the mat and you'll see the color of the umbrella underneath and basically there you go. Now you don't have to do just one object you can you know mask out a variety of different objects in your scene so for example if you had a house and you had various roofs and stuff like that you could mask those out and then derotate it like we did in the pre-comp and then rotate it back and all that should interact with the uh, particles in particular. Now as an additional note um, as you recall in the first scene I had this kind of floor layer here um, so it was accumulating on the ground as well so let's basically take a look at how that's done. Particular has two different things that you can uh, interact with to a floor layer and a wall layer and they're the descriptions are kind of um, not entirely accurate. You can have a vertical layer be a floor layer and a wall layer be horizontal, it doesn't really matter uh, at all. It's just the one's called floor layer, one's called wall layer. So we can have two layers interacting with these particles with our own individual unique alphas. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new um, solid here, layer, new solid. And once again, we'll make this pretty big, 2000 by 2000. And we'll call this ground plane click OK. Once again we'll turn this into a 3D layer. Maybe dial the transparency back just a little bit. Hit the W to reveal the rotation tool and basically just rotate this thing around and drop it down to the horizon. Alright, now we can turn this off, come back to our particular snow and come down here to the floor layer and choose ground plane. Now you can see 
we have the uh, particles interacting with the ground plane. And you can also see how narrow our window is for these particles dropping. So if we want to make this look a lot better in this instance, what we can do is change the Z emitter size and make this you know, a lot bigger. And now we have the particles interacting with the ground layer appropriately. And also you get a little more you know, interest because you've got bigger particles closer to the camera and smaller particles farther away. You can also introduce depth of field if you'd like to. Um, one of the things you might want to consider is um, obviously the handle here of the umbrella is being obscured by particles in the background, which you might not want that. So you, you could just simply mask out the umbrella handle and stick it there um, so that you don't have that problem anymore. But all in all, um, you know, pretty handy effect. You can even see that underneath that 45 degree plane we have for the umbrella, we have a blank space where no particles are hitting, which is pretty realistic. So anyway, uh, hopefully this gave you some insight into how to use trap code particular with the bounce physics and some floor layers creatively to create buildup of particles on objects. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can post them here at creativecow.net in the uh, trap code forum and I'll be happy to answer as many questions or help you out in any way I can and uh, until next time thanks for watching this has been Michael Park for creativecow.net